People at ABC News are always in a hurry, especially couriers. There's urgent film to be transported. For the Jennings Show, for Scope, for directions, for our unprecedented schedule of 30 hour-long documentaries this season for our specials on space and politics. But sometimes it helps to slow down a little, take a look around, and see just what all the fuss is about. Jenning show. They gotta come ashore. Oh, yeah, they gotta literally come ashore. They gotta come ashore in a landing craft. Or this is the Jenning show editorial team. And as usual, they're busy meeting deadlines. The big one is January 9th, 1967 when the program expands to half an hour in color. Then there's the daily deadline, full of decisions that wind up producing network television's most exciting newscast. For Peter Jennings and his colleagues, the new half-hour color format is a welcome challenge. No longer will meaningful stories be dropped for lack of time. The present 10 minutes of editorial time will be more than doubled. Okay, great. We'll go in about 30 seconds. The final moments before Peter goes on the air are crucial ones. The Jennings show is known for its lively pace. It's here, in rehearsal, that the tempo is set under the supervision of executive producer Sid Darian and producer Bob Siegenthaler. Good evening. It may come as a shock to some of you who remember 1953, but as of today, we have more men in South Vietnam than we ever had in Korea. 1,000 men more than just before the armistice was signed at Panmunjom. If our present rate of escalation continues, we'll have more than half a million men away from home by the end of 1967. Tonight, a close look at one of those batteries. Every day, such stories of crucial interest are sent on their way through this control room to millions of American homes. The battery that tape Ho Chi Minh chose to visit, according to the information... But we are not satisfied with simply passing on the raw news. Starting in January, the Jennings Show will feature regular interpretive analysis by Howard K. Smith. Howard's analyses will add as much insight to the news in their own way as color will add to this film of student rioting in Jakarta. Black and white seems strange now. The feeling of reality is blurred. After all, we see in color, not black and white. This is how all ABC News film will look starting January 9th. Humanity, in all its vivid hues, comes alive and sometimes the effect is a little more sobering. Color, a brand new set, a full half hour, an expanded and ever dedicated news staff, the new vital look of ABC News. <laughs> This year, ABC News throws light on the dark continent. For three and a half hours, an entire primetime evening, you'll see one of the most unique and exciting programs in television history. No aspect of Africa will be ignored, especially wildlife, one of the continent's great natural resources. Here, on the Serengeti Plains of Tanzania, a lioness stalks a Thompson gazelle. The basic instinct of every mother is to feed her young ones and protect them from natural enemies. This mother feeds and protects her young ones too. 
but her prime enemies are disease and ignorance. And in the end, they will defeat her. But Africa isn't always what you expect it to be. This is the week's big TV variety program in Nairobi, Kenya. Good evening, viewers. We're happy to be back, and we hope to make you happy as well. Our first song this evening is the song we composed specially for the president, Mzee Kenyatta. Africa, a fantastic continent, and an equally fantastic program, The Africa Project. Steve Fleischman is preparing an exciting color report on the development of the American song in the 20th century. It's called The Song Makers. Here's one of them, Judy Collins. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. This is the city, Cosmopolis, man's creation. Society can't live without it. But there's an excellent chance man cannot live with the city as it has developed. Can man, the creator, control his own creation? Peace or chaos? John Secondari will explore the problem in one of the year's most significant programs. The story of the birth of Jesus is part of the saga of Western man, part of our Western heritage. This holiday season, the Secondaries will bring us the moving story of Christmas. Christ is born. Another great story will be told by Frederick March. When these stones were alive, and when Rome was a great empire, the words, I am a Roman citizen, were the only passport needed to travel anywhere. All of us, are products of this Roman world. All of us share in the great legacy of Rome. This is no ordinary river. It starts in Germany's Black Forest, flows behind the Iron Curtain, and empties into the Black Sea. This is the Danube, the Red and Blue Danube, a major program from executive producer Tom Wolfe. While the Danube show will tell us a little about Central European life, Ivan Ivanovich will give us a rare, uncensored insight into the ordinary Russian's life. This is the Maltsev family, residents of Rostov-on-Don. We'll see them at work and play in the first television program of its kind ever allowed by the Soviet government. Westminster Abbey, celebrating its 900th year as the Hall of Kings. James Mason will tell us about the spiritual home of England's royalty, statesmen, and poets. He'll be assisted by the brilliant actress Siobhan McKenna and by Lynn Redgrave, England's newest star. <laughs> This is the Saturn rocket, which will send American astronauts on their way to the moon. And this is Apollo, the three-man spacecraft that will take them there. When Saturn boosts Apollo into space early next year, 
ABC News will be along for the momentous ride. A television camera inside the spacecraft will beam pictures back to Earth. It will be an unforgettable viewing experience. Yes, we're enthusiastic about a great ABC News year. And the enthusiasm is catching. <laughs>